So you're trying to decide whether you should take a statin or not. And you're feeling a bit conflicted because you've heard some good things, but you've heard some bad things about statins, including some scary health conditions they're associated with. Or maybe you think statins are to lower cholesterol, which is actually only partially true. I'm a GP, an NHS GP working in the UK. And today in this short video, I'm going to go through three things to help you make your decision. Number one, why you should take a statin. Number two, why you should not take a statin. And number three, what are your alternatives? Now, I should point out that there is an exception here. If you've had a heart attack or a stroke or have a genetic condition linked to high cholesterol, then the decision is usually a little bit more straightforward. And this isn't for you. This is for the person who's had their cholesterol checked, found out that it's a little bit high and been advised by their healthcare professional that they need to consider a statin. This is for you. Let's start with the benefits. Why do you actually take a statin? What are the aims? A lot of patients say to me or ask me, what's my cholesterol doctor? Thinking that the aim here is to achieve two point this or three point that or four point that. Yes, statins lower cholesterol, but we're not looking for the achievement here to be a certain level. What we're looking for is to lower the chances of you having a heart attack or stroke. That's what's important. And that begs the question, how good are statins at preventing you from having a heart attack or stroke? Well, it looks like statins are very effective at doing that, and that is largely through lowering cholesterol. But there's evidence to say, regardless of what your cholesterol level is, they can still lower those chances by about 20%. So between a fifth and a quarter, they could help lower your chances. Now, what are your chances of having a heart attack or stroke? Well, that's where the QRISC3 tool comes in. This is a tool that doctors use all the time to calculate your personal risk using figures from like blood pressure, weight, ethnicity, smoking, all these things. You might be able even to do it yourself online. And let's say your risk of having a heart attack or stroke is as high as 40% in the next 10 years. Reducing that by up to a fifth or a quarter, that sounds pretty good. But let's say your risk is only 4%. Well, does it really sound worthwhile to reduce it from 4% down to 3.5%? So don't lose sight of the end goal. Heart attacks and strokes, that's what you're trying to prevent. And statins are only one part of that. Having a healthy lifestyle is the other part. So what are the risks of having a statin? I think one of the most common stories we hear is its ability to cause muscle aches and pains. Now, the chances of a statin actually breaking down your muscle and causing this issue is less than half a percent. So probably not as common as you might have thought. I think we remember all the bad stories. We don't remember the thousands of people who are on statins and get on just fine with them, if that makes sense. But like any other tablet, they have the potential to cause side effects. Of course they do. And if you look at the leaflet, you'll be hours left reading the potential side effects, just like you will with any medicine, even paracetamol. Of course, they can cause tummy ache. They can cause nausea. They can cause diarrhea. They can cause a cough. And up to about 10, sometimes as high as 20%, will have one of these side effects. But the other way of looking at it is 80 to 90% of people don't have side effects taking this tablet. Now, one of the scary things about statins that is certainly worth mentioning are diabetes and myasthenia gravis. Now, myasthenia gravis is this very rare neurological condition which leads to weakness of the muscles in your face. I've not actually seen it happen because of a statin, although there is a link, but it seems that if stopping the statin can actually reverse the condition. So diabetes is an important one to mention because there is evidence that statins alter your sugars, which make you more likely to get diabetes. And of course, the problem with diabetes is it increases the chances of heart attacks and strokes, something we're actually trying to avoid with the statin that might actually cause the thing in the first place. Well, it's about weighing up the risks versus the benefits, the chances. Now, the chances of a statin causing diabetes that leads to heart attacks and strokes is very, 
very small. Whereas the chances of it protecting your heart and protecting your brain are far, far higher. But it's something you should be aware of. Now, something that's maybe not spoken about as much about statins are its connection with dementia and osteoporosis. This is actually the flip side. The good news about it, there's some evidence to suggest that it's protective against these conditions. So just another thing to consider. So now that you've thought about this information, you've researched it for yourself, and you've decided, no, statins aren't for you. Absolutely fair enough. But what are the alternatives? The most important thing to say here is, and this is even if you do decide to go for a statin, it is not a replacement for a healthy lifestyle. This is things like exercise, good diet, stopping smoking, not drinking, looking after your weight. There's no replacement for that really. So one option might be just to go down the lifestyle route or to go down the lifestyle route and try one of the alternatives. So their alternatives include things like ezetimibe, benpidoic acid, and there's even an injection out now that you can take every six months that your GP can arrange. So you can see there are other options out there. At the end of the day, I'm trying to make it simple, but it's not. It's complicated, isn't it? It's not an easy decision. So it is something that you really should consider talking to your own doctor about, but I hope this short video has been useful, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you again soon.